Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to our Spotlight Series. Today, we have the College of Natural Science with us. I'm going to have our panelists introduce themselves. My name is Sarah Bellinger. I'm one of the Assistant Directors of Admission at UMass. Um, and we are running this series so you can get a glimpse into some of our different departments and some of the amazing opportunities that we have at UMass. So Elizabeth, you want to start it off with your introduction and then we'll go to Alexis and Pat? Sure. Thank you, Sarah. I'm Elizabeth Connor, and I am a neurobiologist, a member of the biology department, and more recently, I've become the associate dean for undergraduate education in the College of Natural Sciences. Alexis? Hi, everyone. I'm Alexis. I'm a junior here at the university. Um, I'm majoring in psychology with a minor in sociology and a certificate in social work and social welfare. Um, I'm also a tour guide is why I'm here today, um, but I'll pass it to Pat to introduce himself. Hi everyone, my name is Patrick. Um, I'm also a junior here. I'm studying biochemistry and political science as a dual degree program. Um, and I'm also a tour guide here along with Alexis. Great, thanks. So to kick it off, you know, we like to ask the questions that we get asked the most when we're out on the road. And, you know, of course, the first one is, can you tell us a little bit about the College of Natural Science and kind of its size and give us some, some highlights? Okay, I'm happy to. So the College of Natural Science is the largest college at the university, and it's most focused in the STEM disciplines. You've probably heard that STEM, S-T-E-M, and it stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. We have 14 departments, 13 of which serve undergraduates. Among those 13 departments are 22 majors, and we have almost 500 faculty, 478 as of today, and we have roughly 7,400 students who are either majoring in, in our college as their primary major or their secondary major. How's that? That's Let me also mention a little bit more that I want you to know that we have a dual mission. You know, we're one of these research one universities. And so research is really important here. We're one of a number of colleges in the country and universities who are, um, are described as very high research activity. And we marry that research mission with our teaching and undergraduate and graduate student mission. And I think, in my opinion, and I think of probably everyone here, that that's a wonderful complement, and it synergizes each other, that we bring our research. And let me note, this is you know, generators of no, new knowledge. Your instructors as faculty and researchers are generators of new knowledge and they bring that right into your college experience. So I think that's one of the distinctions of coming to a university like UMass in the College of Natural Science in particular. That's, that's excellent. I think one of the big questions I know I get asked um, when we are out on the road or when we're talking to students virtually is about double majoring. And I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer because I just heard that both Alexis and Pat double major, but is it, is it common for students who are in um, the, the sciences in College of Natural Sciences to double major and kind of, it, it sounds doable. Maybe Alexis and Pat wanna talk a little bit about how that works for them too. Yeah, so I'm not a double major, I'm a, major and a minor just because of things I was interested in. Um, but it's super doable. I know tons of people that do it. Um, all your advisors make a really a plan, a set plan for you. So you know what classes to take, when to take them, when they're offered. Um, you have tons of faculty at your service and they really make it um, your experience, what your experience wants to be, as well as aiding you in what you need, um, as well as like finding classes that like double. So you, it might be your major, it also might be your minor or your other major, um, but just tips and tricks along the way, which are super helpful. I, oh, do you want me to go? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I yeah. totally agree with that. I just wanted to build off of that because the advising is super helpful, especially like I major, I double major in something that's just not related to biochemistry at all. Um, so planning out your classes and trying to take upper level biochem and upper level political science at the same time can be tricky at times, um, just with timing and stuff like that. But um, all the advising is super helpful um, 
to get your schedule down and to get it um, most comfortable to you. Cause I like to take a little bit of both my majors each semester, but I have a roommate who double majors and he likes to do just all one at one time and then all another at another time. So there's just so many ways to go about it. That's great. Can I add a little bit? Is that okay, Absolutely. Sarah? Please, so yeah. I think Alexis and Patrick are great examples of marrying two different disciplines that aren't on top of each other, right? You're developing your scientific cells and your, your other cells as well, whether in sociology, which is sometimes considered STEM in some um, definitions, and in political science. So I really think that when you bring those two different disciplines together, you are a much more impressive candidate regardless of where you're going because you've broadened your skill set so much. And students, am I correct in thinking, students may double major within the College of Natural Science. So if a student was interested in chemistry and physics or math and physics, they could double major? Yes, for an a good example is astronomy and physics because those requirements are so close that almost every astronomy major has a double major in physics. Astronomy is definitely one of those majors that we get asked about because not every college has astronomy. Right. So it's, it's nice that, that they can um, combine that if they want with physics. Um, one of the things I think, you know, I know we've mentioned and you mentioned about research being folded in to the experience that is definitely a hot topic. When we talk to young people, I'm seeing more and more young people who are doing research in high school and however they're getting connected with that, but they often wanna know um, how they can get involved with research here. Um, not just, you know, I know they can do it outside of the sciences as well, but in your school and college, how, how do students get involved? And um, maybe when you're done, if Pat can talk about his research experience and how he got involved, that'd be great. Yes, I'd love to hear from our colleagues here. So there's a number of different paths to a research experience. Some of those are actually embedded in the courses that you take. There are a number of courses in the College of Natural Science that have research components. And some of them are actually authentic. You're generating new knowledge, just like the research faculty are doing it. So the other great thing about getting into those courses early is that it helps you develop those research skills, right? That then you can use to sell yourself to the faculty member who, who is looking for research assistance and opportunities for undergraduates. The other thing, you're gonna be being taught by research faculty. You're gonna to get to know them. They'll tell you about their research. And that's a great way to make a connection and ask to join their research group. And then there are also programs that specialize in helping students jumpstart their research career. I'm gonna mention one of them, Sarah, it's the LESIP or the, it's a summer 10 week paid research program where you are mentored by a faculty member, you join their lab and that research actually continues throughout the next academic year and maybe for your whole academic career at UMass. So you also can do, you know, sort of the cold call. You send an email, you find something that excites you or you talk to one of your peers and it sounds so cool or one of your graduate teaching assistants research you're interested in. So you can get all this information brought to you that you can use to make connections and find that research opportunity. But let's hear from you know the horse's mouths here. Yeah, so my freshman year was when I joined a research lab here on campus and I did it the cold call way. Um, I went to a seminar where a biochem uh, faculty member was discussing his research. I really enjoyed his talk and all that he was talking about. So then I just sent an email literally right after it ended at 7.30 p.m. And I sent the email at like 7.31 after I wrote it. Um, and I was like, your talk was great. Like I was really interested in your work. Um, so we made a time to sit down and meet during that first semester of freshman year. Um, and we just started talking about the research in the lab. And then he ended up offering me a spot in the lab. So um, starting the second semester of my freshman year is when I started doing research. Um, I've been in this lab ever since. I'm doing my honors thesis in it as well. I practically live there um, with all that we're doing, but it's so much fun and it's such a great experience because all of the lectures that I go to and all of the classes that I take just go hand in hand with what I'm doing in lab. 
So even if it's a lab course and I'm, you know, doing the same experiments as I am for my own independent research, it's cool to see how all that parallels. But we also, I have to be the tour guide in myself. I have to also mention the Office of Undergraduate Research and Study um, because that is a great way for students to get connected to research it. Um, it's a whole department in the library and faculty members to help you get connected. So you don't have to do the cold call way. There's so many different ways to get involved, which is really great. That's great. Thanks, Pat. I love that you also can't, you can't shake the tour guide in you ever. It's, <laughs> that is going to be with you forever. Um, and I just want to pause for a second because I just realized because I got a chat sent to me, a, a student just sent me a great question, but um, I'm so sorry, I forgot to introduce Rachel Poulton, who's here in the background with us. She's one of my colleagues, but she is um, available to answer uh, Q&A or chat questions. So if you're in the audience and you want uh, to ask questions, please continue to use that feature. We have that set up for you. So, and my apologies for not saying that right away. So. Uh, so we're, we're back at it. Um, so all this talk about on-campus research, I know, you know, I happen to travel and recruit heavily in the Boston area and in, um, in other parts of Massachusetts. Um, and lots of students ask about off-campus, um, you know, away from the UMass campus, either research and internship opportunities. So can you talk a little bit about what UMass offers in that realm? Absolutely. Thanks for that question, Sarah. So I want you to know that in the College of Natural Science, we have a really robust and, vi and vibrant office of career development. And part of their mission, in addition to making sure you get jobs when you graduate, is to work and ma match you to internship opportunities. Now, you can take internships throughout the year a lot of summer internships, many of which are paid or available. And there also are internships that you can do in many cases as part of your semester work. So that can actually earn you credit in your major. I know, for example, Patrick, that biochemistry and molecular biology is working on integrating that into their curriculum. And one of the special features now of UMass is that we have found that a number of the internship opportunities are within the 495 loop of Boston. And we're here in Western Massachusetts, beautiful Western Massachusetts. But now we have the opportunity for our students to go and live in Newton on our Mount Ida campus and then go and do their internship there, often while taking a course or two through UMass Amherst at Mount Ida. So I think that's a really new advantage that's just going to grow for our majors and it's really exciting. And as we know, internships can be a very, very great entryway into to a company or some sort of a post-career, post-graduation career. Pat or Alexis, um, either one of you can answer this because I think we were chatting about this um, this past weekend, but one of your roommates, James, he does some uh, work that he has to go off campus, correct, in the summer? Do, you, do either yeah. of you have know what he does with that? Yeah. Do you want to go? I can go, Alexis. Do you want so um, my roommate, or our roommate, James, me and Alexis are down the hall from each other. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> our roommate, James, is actually concentrated in marine ecology and marine sciences. Um, so he works in a lab here on campus, and he dissects fish brains and fish ear canals and looks at how the climate change and things like that are affecting them. So he has to go get fish though, because he can't just dissect fish. So he actually um, spent the summer on the Cape and up in the North shore of Massachusetts fishing. He has to go out um, sometimes at like six in the morning to go out and collect the fish when they're all having breakfast. Um, and that way that he can bring them back to the lab here and dissect them. But he absolutely loves it, um, which is really cool that sometimes he takes weekend trips too with his lab um, to go and fish and get all their data and field work and stuff like that. So he likes that he can be in a lab and doing field work at the same time. That's awesome. I thought that was, I, I remember that as a nice example of, of being able to have your lab on campus, but have your field work uh, off campus. So that's, 
that's great. Um, and I love that, you know, I love that you all live together. Uh, all, you, all you CNS majors. Um, and so Alexis, I'm actually gonna pass the next question to you that um, of course we get asked a lot, what if I come in and I come into the exploratory track in College of Natural Science, I don't really know what I wanna do, or even I've picked a major and now I wanna switch it. What was your experience being able to, to make that move to psych? Yeah, so I did not originally start as a psych major. I started as a math major. I was 17, 18, thought I wanted to be a mathematician. Um, didn't really know what I wanted to be, but I liked math. I liked my math class in high school and I was 18. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and I came to mass. I started in CNS. I loved CNS. I was taking all these classes I did really enjoy. Um, the only bummer was I wasn't really enjoying math as much as I thought I would. Um, I had a roommate though who absolutely loved math and she is a math major still. So the program's awesome. The advisors are awesome and they got me to where I am, which I love psych now. So it's so awesome. Um, but I went to my math advisor. I kind of was like, I'm so sorry. I really do like you. It's not you. It's me. I don't know what's happening. And he's like, you're, you're okay. You're going to be okay. I'm like, okay, cool. And I really liked the psych 100 class I was in. I knew I really liked children. I kind of wanted to go down that path. Um, so he pointed me in the direction of the psych department. I went into the psych department. Math had actually gotten me all the prereqs to just transfer super easy. Um, I walked in one day, sat down, it was a 15 minute process. I got to click a button saying Inspire, which is our online that tracks all your courses that I was now a psych major and I haven't looked back. It was the best decision. Um, and then I found sociology through another gen ed I was taking. Um, so it is really easy. I also wanna stress that you do not know what you want half, like you don't know what you want to do. And that's okay, that's okay. Um, there was pressure that I didn't realize was pressure until I was as a, as a psych major. I was like, wow, I actually like this. Um, so you can change. There are so many options. There are so many options in CNS that for me, I was in in-college switch, which was so easy. Um, and I highly recommend. Sarah, so can I add on to what absolutely. Alexa had to say? Yep. So we do have that exploratory track entrance major that you mentioned, Sarah. If you really don't have any idea, you can apply as an exploratory track student. And then we see, are you a little more interested in the life sciences or the physical sciences? And we let you take courses to taste what, what sort of area might match best for you. I also think it's worth mentioning as, as you five. No, all of the majors in the College of Natural Science are open majors and available to all students. We don't build any barriers or walls to prevent you from changing your major. The only time we worry if it's late in your career, because we're committed to that four-year graduation rate. We want you to get on and get out there and make us proud in a four year time scale. But so this is easy to do. And I'm gonna give you one more example because I come from the life science world. Many students fall in love with biology in high school. Then they come to UMass as biology majors and they find out that it's a really rich and diverse area of study. And Pat, he is in biochemistry and molecular biology, a biological life science. You might find yourself in microbiology, environmental science, food science. So that too is very common that you come here, you discover a whole new discipline and you move. Yes, well, that kind of um, addresses my next question, which is I think um, I've stood behind countless and endless uh, the high school and college fair tables where the two questions are, how are your bio and how are your psych departments? Um, those are very popular for students, um, but especially biology. And then the, the follow-up that students always say or tend to say is, I wanna study biology because I wanna to go to med school. And so can you talk a little bit about kind of the myths around that and, sure. and how that works out? Sure. So there is no magic major. 
to go into medical school. And there will be trends that people will say, oh, you've got to have this kind of a double major or this is going to get you in. You're going to get in straight and simple because you have taken the core foundation courses, which are only a handful, intro bio, general chemistry, physics, organic chemistry, and probably some calculus in there. And anybody can take those in addition, you can be a Spanish major and satisfy those pre-med requirements. What's important is that you have a passion for medicine and that you do well in your courses, regardless of what they are, and that you do well on your entrance exam, the MCAT. Now, I think one thing you, um, you mass because it's not, it's housed in CNS, we have a really robust pre-health, pre-med office of advising. So from the first day you come to campus, you can join that group, receive their newsletter, participate in the advising sessions for first year students, and on the way up, as you move through your curriculum, you'll have one-on-one -on -one advising with some of our pre-med, pre-health. We also have pre-vet advising. So there are great opportunities and they give you, you can check out the website actually for this, they give you detailed instruction and guidance in terms of choosing your courses and most importantly, developing those experiences that make clear to the admissions committees that you've thought this through, you actually enjoy being around sick people and that you're, this is the career for you. Too often, you know, if we get back a, a few years, people went into medical school without actually doing hands-on work with people who are ill or elderly and then get into medical school and go, Ugh, this isn't what I wanna do. So now we make sure that you have made the right decision. And, but there is, so Sarah, no magic major for medical school. That's what I try to tell young people. And I try to also stress that there's medical school and there's so many other rich yes. opportunities in the health related field. So exactly. you, you know, might use a data science, you might come at it with a data science uh, background or, um, you know, more of a psychology background. So there's or business, like, you know, yeah. business is a great skill set to bring to medicine, just because if you want to have your own practice, having that sort of background is also a recipe for success once you begin your, um, your medical career. Yeah. And now we have a new business minor. So that's something that students could, could certainly yeah. combine if they can, if, if they want to kind of tackle it that way. So I think it's, you know, we always talk about and Alexis kind of hinted to this is her advisors helped her realize it, what was best for her and her experience at UMass. And I think that is something that we do pretty well in, in terms of having students carve their experience um, at UMass. So, um, you know, my final question, unless we have, if Rachel tells us we have any questions from the audience, but um, is, so what's a next step? For a prospective student who might be watching this with us today, what's their next step and how do they find out more information and, um, you know, where's their go to to find out uh, about more about CNS. Okay. Well, Sarah, I think one resource is your office, right? Admissions is, uh, is one option, but you can go to cns.umass.edu and that website will give you lots of information. What can it tell you? It can give you a list of all of our majors and minors and what courses they involve. It can be a gateway to all the departments in the, in the college. And there you can read about any faculty members, research programs, program, special opportunities. You can go to the advising center, the pre-medical pre-health advising center there for information. So it's a deep well of information about the college. Now I want to tell you that if that doesn't satisfy, if you have a specific question and you can't find an answer, you can email us at CNS advising center at umass.edu. I'll say it again more slowly. I talk too fast. CNS advising center, all one word at umass.edu. And we'll get back and answer you hopefully within 24 hours. Great. 
And what about Alexis and Pat? Do you have any um, parting advice or anything you want to share out? Get those essays done early. I know <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. Like I know I, we were high schoolers. We did it. Um, but I started my essays this summer going into senior year. I finished them and I just had way more fun senior year. I wasn't worried. I had so many friends who were like, oh my gosh, this application is due in 20 like minutes. I'm like, what? no that just stressed me out and it stressed them out so if I know I know it's your last year of high school I know it's your summer but really that would be my parting advice if you are going to college with any college application get it done early I like to want to echo what Alexis said and at 18 you do not know what you want to do at all and I totally agree with that I came in as biology pre-med as a lot of us do and then I fell in love with research and I realized I don't like trees all that much biology has a lot of trees biochemistry is where the cells and proteins are and I'm not a big tree hugger like that I don't want to study them all that much but I love the cells and I love doing that so definitely don't stress yourself out with you're stuck in this career path for four years. I'm pretty sure the day that I declared my political science major sophomore year, I met Alexis for lunch two seconds after that advising appointment. And I said, I did a thing. I might have added a second major on top of this that is not related to my studies whatsoever. And she was like, you're crazy, but I love that you're doing what you want to do. And that's so important. Just don't focus. Don't think you're stuck in that lane for four years because you can do absolutely everything. And what about Oaks? I, I lied. I have one more question. What about any um, student groups or places of support for that you've, you know, either been involved in or know about um, that students could check out once they are UMass students? Oh, like I can that. go first. Yeah. Go. Um, I absolutely love the advising. The big thing, I, I can't take the tour guide on me. The big thing I say on tour is that anything that you decide or think about doing, you get an advisor for. So I have the CNS advisors because I'm part of that college. I have the political science. I have the biochem. I used to have the pre-med when I wanted to do that for a little bit. And they just, they're so helpful because they've seen every type of student and they know exactly what you're going through. Like when I was on the fence about pre-med, it was so great to sit down one-on-one -on -one and just talk about why I would want to do that or what my other career options might be and what interests me the best. So just having that almost like adult support network, because it's the first time you're really living away from home. So having that like kind of sound voice to just talk things through. Um, and also all the registered student organizations on campus, because we have the, it sounds a little nerdy, but as a biochemistry major, I'm also part of the biochemistry club. So like you get to do that stuff and talk about um, those great things as well. So just get involved too. That's a great um, advice. Yes. Yeah. I'd also say like kind of bouncing off that is peer advisors. If maybe a, an advisor is just like a little too much, a little too scary, too official, that's totally okay. They also have peer advisors who are super helpful, been through a lot of training to know exactly what any question you need answered. They probably have the answer. And if not, they'll ask the advisor as well. And it's just someone who's going through the same thing as you they also are an undergrad so there's a lot less pressure if that's something that maybe isn't sounding great but there is other ways of help nice thank you and you can be a peer advisor that's the other cool thing right it's yeah. a wonderful thing to have on your your um, resume and to gain a lot of skills in that venue that's right so it sounds like get involved get involved early ask lots of questions and and be curious and you'll you'll do well in in the College of Natural Science. Absolutely. Any parting thoughts, Elizabeth? There, we wrap it up. No, we're here for you. Great. It's a great education. We are also here for you in the admission office. So, um, and the other email I'm gonna give a shout out to because I also can't take the tour guide out of um, the background <laughs> here is, if you wanna talk to students like Alexis and Pat about we have 70 tour guides and they come from a wide variety of majors and it's an easy email to remember. It's tours at umass.edu. So you can always email that account and, and the students check that email and they pass it around to their friends. If you want to, you know, study fish, they're going to pass it to their friend James. Or if you want to do uh, mathematics, they're not going to send it to Alexis, but they'll send it to Zoe. So uh, those are good things. Um, but thank you everybody for coming and watching our series today. Thank you so much to Alexis and Pat and 
the biggest uh, thank you to Elizabeth for sharing her time with us today and her knowledge about the College of Natural Sciences. So thank we're going to sign off. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. Thanks, Have a great day. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.